Thank you for tuning in to today's stretch class. Today we're going to be stretching um, our shoulders and our, our butt, our, so our hips, our shoulders. And uh, yeah, it will be a really gentle class, perfect for doing after a big workout or if you're just about to go to bed um, or if you're just having like um, a day where you want to take it a little bit easier, this class is perfect for just a gentle stretch. Uh, we'll get started on our yoga mat. Um, if you can first just come to a comfortable seat, either kneeling or cross-legged, whatever feels most comfortable for you. And can you close your eyes and take a nice deep breath into your body and a full breath out. A few more breaths, just like that. And can you keep that connection to your breath and gently blink your eyes open? Uh, take both of your hands behind you and interlace your hands together. And then bring your fists over towards your left hip. So you bo bring both hands over towards your left hip bone. Um, and let your right shoulder depress down your back. And let your left ear come towards your left shoulder. So you should get a stretch along the right side of your neck. Can you take a deep breath in? and a steady breath out and see if you can maybe close your eyes in yoga there's this term known as dharana which translates as the ability to concentrate um, and if you're like me and a lot of my friends these days a lot of people i'm talking to they just say that their ability to concentrate has totally gone out the window take one more breath here and a full breath out. And then bring your head back to center. Um, bring your hands all the way over towards the right hip. Depress your left shoulder. And now let your right ear come towards your right shoulder. And I just think because there's so much going on in the world right now, and um, we're all curious about how it's all going to unfold, or we're all concerned about how it's going to unfold, that we're always continuously um, you know, seeking out answers or trying to check in with the news or our phone or our computer. Um, there's a lot of uh, stimulus, a lot of um, information continuously being um, churned out. And as a result, I think um, most of us find it a little difficult to concentrate. And I think this practice of yoga can be this beautiful opportunity to kind of just close our eyes and begin to re-harness that ability to just focus. Bring your head back to center. Good, and release. Please put both of your hands on the ground and come to a standing forward fold. So take your feet a little bit wider than hip width. Let yourself fold over your legs and see if you can walk your fingertips forward in front of you until your arms are straight and tense your hands like they're big huntsman spiders and press your fingertips into the ground and try to find a little bit more length in the spine, pressing the tops of your thighs kind of back. Maybe walk your hands a little bit more forward. So you almost want to view it as if someone's trying to pull your wrists forward and down into the ground and then there's someone behind you grabbing onto the tops of your thigh bones near your hips and they're pulling the tops of your legs your hips back can you inch your fingertips a little further away from you as you press the tops of the thighs back and get a little bit longer in the spine so there's no rounding in the back the spine is elongating bend your knees a bit if you need to let your head relax 
Take one more deep inhale. And a full exhale. Good. And then walk your hands so they're beside your feet on either side. Take your hands behind you and interlace the hands together. And let your arms come overhead. Let your head release down towards the ground. And can you take five slow breaths? This is just an opportunity to connect to your body and your breath and disconnect from your, I was going to say phone, but not really because we're all doing yoga right now on our phones. Um, so yeah, at least we're not looking at Facebook or Instagram or emails. Um, and ultimately, my instruction is just for you to connect with your body. So can you view this as an opportunity to disconnect from your phone, from your computer, from TV, and to listen to your breathing and feel sensations in your own body. Can you take one more deep inhale? And a really long exhale. And then slowly release your hands down towards the ground. If you have two blocks, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. Step your right foot back to a big lunge. Drop your right knee down towards the ground and let your pelvis shift forward and down towards the floor. So um, I was reading this really interesting uh, scientific study. So we're in a low lunge here if you'd like. You can put both of your hands on the inside of your left foot if that feels a little bit better. Um, and if you would prefer, you can come down onto your elbows and forearms on your blocks or all the way to the floor or you can stay up on your hands. It's totally up to you. We'll be here for a little bit. So I was reading this uh, scientific study and you know it's been common in the exercise science world um, to believe that stretching doesn't actually change the length of the muscle. Um, a lot of exercise physiologists, um, physiotherapists, um, doctors even um, believed that you know stretching did not actually change the length of a muscle. What it did is it changed um, the neuro response of the muscle. So the muscle adapts, the nervous system adapts to a stretch or to a movement and that's why you can go deeper into a stretch the more you repeat it. But it's because your nervous system has adapted to that movement and as a result um, it allows for the muscle to move more in that direction, but it doesn't actually change the, the, the length of the muscle. Um, but there's this new science study that um, was done, I believe in Norway, where they did a measurement of people stretching over six months in the morning and e the evening for six months, and their muscular length did actually change, and they were able to measure the people's muscular length and after six months of stretching they recorded that people's muscles did in fact get longer so this is kind of one of the the first big studies um, where they've actually proven that no your muscles can actually physically get longer it's not just a nervous system response so fascinating so that this study happened just last year so it's quite current so we can literally physically change the length of our muscles by stretching. The thing is we have to do the stretching repeatedly and consistently. And the stretching method that they used in that study is that you needed to hold the stretches not actually for that long, for 45 seconds to a minute. So there's a lot of studies out there that said you can only change the muscle if you hold stretches for two minutes or longer. Uh, but this study they did um, one stretch repeated three times um, for 45 seconds to a minute. Can you take one more deep inhale and a full exhale? And we'll switch sides. So please lift your back knee up and we'll just switch legs. So when you're ready, step your right foot forward and your left knee comes down. <coughs> 
And if you want the name of that study, I can give it to you. I just, something Bobovich or something. I forget the name totally, but I have it on my computer. So if you're a nerd and you want the name of the person who did it, I think it's Moktovovich. It's a weird name. Um, step your right foot forward, your left knee is back, so you're on the other side now. And your hands can be on the blocks, your hands can be on the ground, or you can take your elbows and forearms to the ground. And I would invite you to choose a position that feels like a, a decent stretch, not the most intense stretch. So the coolest thing about this science study was that they didn't push people really aggressively in the stretching routines. People held like moderate stretches for 45 seconds to a minute and repeated it three times a day, I believe it was. And that was enough to facilitate, um, you know, a change in the muscular tissue. So you don't have to kill yourself in the stretching is basically what I'm saying. It can be a little more on the moderate, gentle side here. And then maybe can you let your eyes close and allow yourself to breathe. Isn't it such just a beautiful gift to be able to close your eyes and kind of just let your attention move internally to your breath, to the sensations of your body. And if you let yourself pay attention to the sensations of the body, it's so cool to notice how they begin to change the longer you hold the pose. Please take one more deep breath into your body. And a full breath out. Good, and slowly release. Come out of the pose nice and slow. Step your right foot back if it was forward. And please come right into downward dog pose. Send your butt back and up towards the sky. Bend your right knee, let your left heel drop heavy. Take a full breath in, a full breath out. Good, and then switch sides. Bend your left knee, your right heel drops heavy. Take a deep inhale, and a full exhale. Okay, please take both of your knees down towards the ground. And then take your, um, sit down onto your right butt and bring your right shin so it's more parallel to the front edge of your mat. So you're totally sitting on your right butt. And then bring your left knee so it's close towards your right foot. Now, because we all have incredibly different hip sockets, we might need to play with the configuration of the legs here depending on your body. This position feels best for me. But I've noticed with some of my students, they often need to take their left knee a little bit further behind them or out to the side or back behind them in order to feel more comfortable. Generally, the further back you take the left knee, the more intense it could be through the stretch in the right hip as well as the stretch through the left hip. Um, if you don't know what to do, just keep your left knee very close to your right foot like I'm doing. Place your right hand on the ground just about a foot out from your right knee and shift more of your torso and your weight towards your right foot. So you're shifting your torso a little more to the left. I like to place my left hand in towards my right foot and just gently push the foot into the hand. And then inhale, can you find a little more length to the torso and exhale, push to the right hand. So you shift the torso more to the left. And then see if you can fold over the leg and bring your head maybe towards your right foot. 
You can keep your right hand on the ground, or sometimes I put my elbow of my right hand on my right knee, or you can place the elbow on the ground. Can you maybe let your eyes close? Can you let your head relax, let your shoulders try to soften? In yesterday's class, I was talking about how sometimes with everything that's going on, it can cause us to want to avoid certain things, avoid certain feelings, and when we avoid or resist, it can cause inner tension. And one way we can um, release tension through, um, that is caused by resisting or avoiding things is just by allowing ourselves to soften physically and mentally. Can you let your mind soften? Can you let your jaw soften? Take another five breaths here. Can you let yourself be gentle? Notice if you're trying to over push yourself into stretching. Can you allow yourself to release into a stretch rather than press or force into it? And then inhale, slowly come up. We're going to switch sides. Left shin comes forward. And so left shin comes parallel to the front edge of your mat. Right knee is close towards your left foot. Or you can take your right knee a little more to the side or behind you. It's, it's really up to you. Place your left hand on the ground just in front of your left knee and push your left hand into the ground. So your torso moves to the right. Maybe put your right hand in the arch of your left foot and then slowly fold over your left leg. Option to place your left elbow on the ground just in front of your left shin if that feels better. Can you allow yourself to soften? Muscles in your face, relax. Can you let your belly totally relax? Take one more deep breath in. And out. Good, and then slowly come all the way up. Spread your legs wide, out to either side. Pavishta Konasana. If you have blocks, you can use them. Place your elbows or your arms or your hands down on the ground in front of you. You can walk your hands all the way forward if you'd like or place your elbows on the ground. Maybe rest your head and your hands. 
or forehead on your floor or blocks. And then um, if you have a block, place one of them on your inner right thigh. Place your elbow on the block so you're four, that your head's resting in your hand, kind of like you're studying at a table. And your left hand comes behind the skull. So you're in a supported side bend and you can stay there or you can reach and grab onto the right ankle or foot. It's totally up to you. If your head feels heavy, good job, you've got lots of brains then you can maybe rest your head against the hand so your neck gets a chance to release as well. If you don't have a block, then you can just rest your elbow on your knee or thigh or shin. Or just let your head hang. And then inhale, slowly come all the way up. And, and exhale, we'll come to the other side. Left elbow can come to the block, or it can come to your shin or your thigh. Rest your head either on your left palm, or you can make a fist and rest the side of your head against the fist. Right hand comes behind your head. Okay. Option to stay there or reach the left hand towards the right foot. Keep turning the chest up. And breathe. Slow, steady breath in. Slow, steady breath out. Take one more deep breath. And we'll slowly come up. All right. You can choose to lie on your back for Shavasana or for meditation or come to a comfortable seat. We'll finish with a five minute meditation. It's because it's a beautiful way to invite a softening of the mind. And like I said, there's often so much stimulus, uh, stimulus. <laughs> There's so much um, stim stimulation right now with everything that's going on. Um, it's really nice to have an opportunity to close the eyes and process everything that we've been taking in. So I've noticed lately in my meditations, a lot of things keep popping up in my brain and I just view it as this beautiful opportunity to be like, oh, this is time where I can finally process this. So if you'd like to, you can lie on your back if that's more comfortable for you, um, or sit in a chair, or just come to a comfortable seat. Close your eyes. Can you maybe view this as an opportunity to allow yourself to process everything that's been going on? So if things surface in your mind, can you accept it with compassion? rather than being judgmental of having a busy mind? Can you accept the busyness of your mind if it is busy? And see if you can keep your attention on your breath. A steady, slow breath in. 
And a steady, slow breath out. And if your mind gets preoccupied or wanders, can you allow that, accept that, when it feels right, bring the mind back to the feeling of your breath. Allow your mind to wander. Allow it to digest information. Allow it to digest past experiences. And then have the ability to bring your mind back to the feeling of your breath in this moment. Three more minutes here in relative quiet. Can you listen to yourself breathe? Take a deeper breath in, a full breath out. Can you take a moment to mentally thank yourself for taking a little bit of quiet time for your body and your mind? Sometimes the best thing we can do is just close our eyes, take a few deep breaths. Gently blink your eyes if they're open, if they're closed. Um, if you're in Toronto, have a beautiful sleep. Um, if you're in Melbourne, have a beautiful day. And wherever else you are in the world, Colombia, New Zealand, I hope you have a beautiful day. Thanks for tuning in. Love you lots. Namaste.